muito feliz. Hi there. Right. Hope you've all had a lovely weekend. I've had a hectic weekend. I've had both my grandchildren here. Last night I thought I hit jackpot because my grandson, he likes to get in the bed with me. Don't know why. Right. And but last night I said, he wanted to get in, go and sleep with his sister, who's three years old. He's six, she's three. So I asked him, she said, yeah, that's fine. So I thought, yes, I'll get my bed to myself tonight. Well, he went in, took the tablet off, went to sleep. Right, I went to bed about half ten. I think I was in bed half an hour. Maybe 45 minutes. I heard them coming through. No, Dennis. Oh, oh, God. So I said, did you leave the covers on? He said, no. And I know when he gets out of bed, he just don't pull them off him. He'll pull them, the whole lot off everyone. Right? How I make a difference? Right, so... I've started to get up out of the bed to go and put these covers back, I do that back over on. Then I heard her cry. So I've gone, I was going through anyway. And she's going, I'm all wet. The first time she has wet the bed while at mine. First time. So I'm not going to, it's my own fault. I should have checked before she went to bed and put her on the toilet, but I didn't. It's my own fault. So I've got her out of the bed, pulled the sheet off, right? And I've undressed her. Got something else to put on her. I said, right. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do, though. I said, I'm going to put a pull up on you. I said, because I don't want you having any accident in my bed. So I ended up having 
myself, my three-year-old granddaughter, and then my grandson. Then, early hours in the morning, I went, Ellis, move over. He went, I can't. I've looked over, and my granddaughter, who's three years old, has got half of the bed to herself. And me and Ellis, I literally, I'm on the edge of my bed, and he's right up by me. I thought, oh my lord. So, forgive me, I'm not totally with it tonight because I've had very little sleep. And then I've had to try and catch up with everything that's been going on over the weekend because I've not really been, had much chance. Not while I've had my two grandchildren here. No way. When it's only Ellis, I can get on my laptop and just check what's going on. But when my granddaughter's here, she's, she's constant. You know what I mean? And she wants me to do things with her, play with her, and then I've got Ellis wanting me to do things with him. I'm like, okay. But can I have a coffee first? <laughs> anyway, so I had a busy, hectic weekend, but a lovely one. Because I love having my grandkids. I never turn down the opportunity to, to have them. Never. Even though I know the next day I'm going to be absolutely shattered, I never turn that opportunity down. Right? Anyway, I've got my stinker of a flipping cold. And not get rid of it. So, I've still got a bit of a cough, not much, not as bad as it was, but more sniffles now, more of the sniffles. Anyway, so quite a lot's come out this weekend, right? Uh, I was going to talk about it tonight, but I won't because I want to do that separate. So, some information has come out on Elijah B. Not Nothing, he hasn't been found. Well, at least the police are still looking down in Two Rivers, wherever, Wisconsin, with Sebastian. It's like the police only want to look because they've got all these searches coming down, organisations like these divers coming in and doing searches, and it's making them look silly. You know what I mean? So it's like, oh, we best get out there and start looking again. Hmm. I don't know what you all think of the law enforcement and what are they doing, what job they do. They might be doing a good job in the search, but the search is picking anything up, is it? And what are they doing in this investigation? Right? I know they haven't got anything to say, say, done it. For Christ's sake, put them on the Pressure. One of them will crack. One of them will crack. I think it would be her, not him. I tell you, that when the time comes, he's gonna he's gonna drop it all on her lap. He'll drop it all on her. So, Katie. If you ever get to listen to this, do yourself a favour. If you're back at your house, which I don't believe you are, get in touch with TBI. Because I tell you now, if they call you in and him in, he'll drop you in it. Without a but I've a lead, he'll drop you in it. But I found a lot of stuff that was on TikTok. Right? And not much has been come out on Facebook. It's all about these TikTok things that have been coming out. So, 
I'm gonna decide that. <laughs> So, has anyone, anyone seen that interview she gave? Right, tell me, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. Right, right it's only a short interview, but I understand this. Uh, OP Live, right? They've got a big channel and they do they every Friday, Saturday, apparently, they talk about missing children and they get the names out there and the photos out there. So, if that helps, then go for it, right? Yes, okay, YouTubers. Some YouTubers have got a lot of followers. But this OP Live is national. Uh, so I watch it. And I say, I find it. Two little things. Well, say two. There's quite a bit about it in that short time of this interview. It's quite a bit. bit. Right. So we're going to look at it. I'm just going to get it up now, put it up for you. Um, As I said, it is only what three minutes fifteen seconds. So I'm gonna let it run first and then we can go back to it and I'll point out the things that I picked up on. So let's get going. Buckle up. The teenager. During the early morning hours of February 26, 2024, 15-year-old Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers disappeared from his home in Hendersonville, Tennessee. That's about 20 miles north of Nashville. He's not been seen or heard from since. And Sebastian is now the subject of an Amber Alert. Now Sebastian's mom, Katie Proudfoot. Under um, I would say that this isn't a tragedy that we would wish anyone to have experience. Our, we're keeping our faith and we're praying every day that, that we're going to find Sebastian. What's the latest on the search? So law enforcement is exploring any and all possibilities. Is, um, they're communicating daily with us about updates and the statuses. We, we have faith that all the law enforcement agencies involved are doing everything that they can, um, and we're going to find Sebastian and bring him home. We know the most important thing right now is to get the word out about Sebastian. What would you like our viewers to know about your son? Uh, Sebastian, he is uh, high-functioning. He's You're so goofy. <laughs> he's typically a very, very sweet boy. Um, he can be quite temperamental, though, if he's overstimulated or if he's stressed out. He has a unique run. He runs like the the Naruto anime character. Uh, when he's when he's excited, he likes to to dab and he loves music. He loves to dance. That's all very helpful information now if sebastian is out there watching what would you like to say to your son i would say bubba we love you we all love you so much um wherever you are just know that we are not going to stop we're going to keep searching we're going to find you we're going to bring you home and if you 
you ever get an opportunity, find a phone, find a safe adult, call 911. Um, but I'd also like to, to ask our community, please, please keep searching your properties, keep sharing his flyer. Um, if you know something or you see something, please say something, call the law enforcement immediately. We're gonna do everything we can to help find him. Thank you. All right. It was nice to see her in an interview on her own. That's what we've been asking for for weeks now, without Chris being there and taking control of the whole lot. But who thinks Chris was there? I think he was. Do you really think he's going to let her do an interview without him being in that room? Nope. Nope. I think he was there. And I also believe this interview was done maybe the last time she was at the house. Right? And I've just... I think it was longer than what one minute, whatever it was. But they've had to edit it down. So I think it was done a week or so ago, a couple of weeks ago. But did you notice the t-shirt she was wearing? Yep. One with Sebastian's picture of. And her plea to the communi community to keep looking and going out there and looking and checking their property. Because you know what? She's not doing it. That's why she's asking you to do it. Anyway, I'm going to go to this again because, as I said, there was something. Right at the beginning. And I'll stop it when it gets there. OP Nation, tonight, we need your help to find a missing Tennessee teenager. <sighs> During the early morning hours of February 26, 2024, 15-year-old Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers disappeared from his home in Hendersonville, Tennessee. That's about 20 miles north of Nashville. He's not been seen or heard from since. And Sebastian is now the subject of an Amber Alert. Joining us now is Sebastian's mom, Katie Proudfoot. Katie, thanks for being with us under what must be very difficult circumstances. First of all, how are you and your family holding up? Um, I would say that this isn't a tragedy that we would Tragedy. Now, tragedy to me means something bad. Right? But I thought you suddenly just walked out the house. Yes, that's bad, but I don't think tragedy is the right word to use, love. Unless you know something we don't know. Because tragedy to me is like, what, well, let's have a hypothetical thing. Um, someone falling over or someone getting injured on public transport or something like that. That's a tragedy because it's shouldn't have happened you know what i mean someone got hurt someone got hurt bad but you saw from all what we understand love he just walked out the house but then did he did he just walk out the house my internet is playing up so if i disappear it's my internet we're getting a bit of a Bad weather going round in where I am. So, just a warning in case I lose you completely. So, that was an odd word to use, in my opinion. Just an odd word. Would wish anyone to ever experience. Uh, we are, we're keeping our. 
and that's something else he says every time it's some it's, an, it's something i wouldn't want anyone to experience he says that in every interview faith and we're praying every day that we're going to find sebastian what's the latest on the search so law enforcement is exploring any and all possibilities um, they're communicating daily with us about updates and the statuses we we have faith that all the law enforcement agencies involved are doing everything that they can um, and we're going to find sebastian and bring him home right i'm so glad they're telling you everything being as you're just sitting on your backside doing back all. I'm so glad they're telling CP everything. Because, he, oh yeah, he's just a stepfather. But they don't tell the, the father, Seth, anything. In fact, when he asks them a question, all right. You know, Tracy DM me something really bad. Right, something bad happened. We wouldn't use, I wouldn't use the word tragedy in the same sentence as I'm talking about my son who's gone missing. Anyway, so they tell CP everything, but they're not telling Seth anything in fact when he messaged them the other week about the article articles of clothing that he was wearing at the steakhouse they got quite angry with him why now it's just a plausible question have you got the clothing that he wore the night he was at the steakhouse Yes or no? Because if it's yes, then fine. If it's no, then why not? And if Katie can't produce those clothing and you haven't got them clothing, that shows, well, that shows me, in my opinion, my opinion, that if she can't give you those clothing, not new brought, not so much just you take to the shop and brought the same items. Those items that he wore that night, then, it, in my opinion, I don't think Sebastian come home that night. And people go on about, oh, but there's door, ring doorbell footage of him taking the bins out. Seth has seen that ring doorbell. Took him five weeks to see all this. Where Katie and Seth see me straight away. Right? Um, he, Seth himself said he could not make out who it was taking them bins out. It was that dark. All you got was a, like a little, a little bit of a light of a, a little torch. But it wasn't in your flight. Right? Now, saying that, did they not say themselves that the only lights that are always on, that never turned off, are the lights above the garage? Yep. Now, if that was the case, would you not have been able to tell who it was going back into the garage? Or walking past the garage at that time. I don't think those lights were on. Because they had, to, they had to pick someone up on that ring doorbell. They had to pick something up on that ring doorbell of going past the garages or walking back into the garage. If those lights were on. But Seth said it was that dark. You could not make out who it was who took the bin scan. So the only last proof of life he's got is when he saw his son leaving that steakhouse with his mother on the Sunday evening.
and that was from Seth's mouth. We know the most important thing right now is to get the word out about Sebastian. What would you like our viewers to know about your son? Uh, Sebastian, he is high functioning, autistic. Um, he loves animals. He loves video games. He loves fishing. Green tea. You're so goofy. <laughs> He's. You know who he reminded me of then when he made green tea? Is his voice. My other grandson. And that's the sort of thing you come out with green tea. He's typically a very, very sweet boy. Um, he can be quite temperamental, though, if he's overstimulated or if he's stressed out. He has a unique run. He runs like the the Naruto anime character. Uh, when he's when he's excited, he likes to to dab and he loves music. He loves to dance. That's all very helpful information. Now, if Sebastian is out there watching, what would you like to say to your son? I would say, Bubba, we love you. We all love you so much. Did you hear that? He said, if Sebastian can hear you, what would you like to say to me? Say, I would say. So we're going to go back on that. excited he likes to to dab and he loves music he loves to dance that's all very helpful information now if sebastian is out there watching what would you like to say to your son i would say bubba we love you we all love you so he loves to dance i would say bye now if that was my son and someone said if your son is out there and can hear this, what would you like to say to him? I'd say, I'd say, I'd say his name. I'd say, Sebastian, we love you. We're looking for you. Just if you can get, if you get away from him, who's ever holding you and you can get away from him, run. But we will find you. You know what I mean? No, I would say. Because that to me is saying, it's just actually what would you say to your son if he's out there and you can hear this and you just, she just said i would say and that doesn't jam with me just didn't seem right to hear those word, that word i think i must have listened to this about three times three or four times and that's when i heard it i would say and i thought that don't sound right Right. I don't know what everyone else is thinking of this, but that's just some I picked up on it. Things that that's all very helpful information. Now, if Sebastian is out there watching, what would you like to say to your son? I would say, Bubba, we love you. We all love you so much. Um, wherever you are, just know that we are not going to stop. We're going to keep searching. We're going to find you. We're going to bring you home. And if you, you ever get an opportunity, find a phone, find a safe adult, call 911. Um, but I'd also like to, to ask our community to please, please, please keep searching your properties. Keep sharing. Because she's asking the community to keep searching their properties because you know what? She's doing fuck all. Pardon my French. His fire. Um, if you know something or you see something. My mum love. The acting. Get them kids out. Something. Please say something. Call the law enforcement immediately. I think you need to buy that. Is it an ointment thing you can buy? Which you put on a, a little drop on a bit of tissue. And if you hold it up by your eyes, it's like an onion smell right or something like that it, it sets you off and gets your eyes watering and running she needs something like that we're going to do everything we can to help find him thank you but 
I don't know. I didn't find it too. It got the point out there. It got Sebastian's name out there. It got his picture out there. It got about what he likes. And I love that video of him, the green tea. But if anyone ever seen the full, that video, when she said, when he does that and he says green tea, and she goes, and he's smiling from ear to ear, then she'll go, she goes, oh, you're so good, spasming or something, you're so, so goofy. And that smile just goes. You know what I mean? So, um, but it's a, a brilliant, a lovely little video. Not very long. But um, that is what I picked up on. I don't think she's that convincing. And um, to be honest with you, I don't think she was there on her own. Because I, I know she's reading off a paper because her eyes kept going down to the left and looking at something written down. Right? So she's probably written a few notes. Okay. I can understand that. But that word tragedy, and when she said, I would say. I just said something like, Sebastian, if you can hear this, we love you. We're going to find you. We're looking for you everywhere. If you can get away, run. If you get that opportunity, just run. But we will find you. You know what I mean? And all that. This is the first time she's actually put a, a plea, a call out for him. So... It's the first time she spoke on her own about her, her behalf. And that was about it, really. So I hope going on that show, the TV show, does help. Because, Christ's sake, the law enforcement and TBI aren't doing freckle. Law enforcement have literally just said themselves in that press release the other week we're just waiting for that one tip to come in to break the case open they've got nothing they're waiting on a tip to come out in that is just going to break the case open they've got nothing well i'm sorry but i You've got a 15-year-old autistic lad, right? His brain development is about, as his father said, about 10, 11. Um, who apparently got up during the night, walked out the house with no phone, no coat, no shoes. And just a little pocket torch, keychain torch. That's it. All right. Now, when you hear about Sebastian from his father, Seth, I love to hear Seth talk about Sebastian. I really do. But um, you heard that story about how he won't go outside without shoes on because when he was a, a little toddler, he put his foot in what he thought was mud and was um, fire ants. And since that day, he's never gone outside without shoes on. Never. Right? His father did say, sometimes if he's just running down to the, letter, uh, the post box, right, where he hasn't got to go on grass and it's just down the path. So run down, get the post and run back in. But that's very, very rare he does it, but he has done it. Right? Now, I'm wondering, 
they used to put him outside because apparently there's a technique you're told to use the children having like a meltdown put them outside where they, they can't hurt no one or themselves well if you still hurt themselves right and when they're calm they just knock the door and you let them back in no i don't believe in that i believe uh we do my grandson ellie he's not diagnosed with adhd or autism or anything yet but he's got some traits and he's in the on the waiting list now six years old and i've been i'm at his mum and dad since he's about one well since he started walking i said to them i said he's got no spatial awareness because he turned and smacked his head into the door frame he had no spatial awareness of what of his surroundings nothing he turned and bumped into people i noticed that as soon as he started walking and everything was about him i was picking up on and i said you need to get this push this now right and they have been pushing and they've been pushing out for four years four years and now it's finally on a waiting list which can take up to a year to be seen but when he has when he has his uh, like a meltdown or temper tantrum or whatever you want to call it he has been known to hit out to throw things you know what i mean he'll walk past the table and knock everything off the table and anything so um when he's here i used to say ellis just go to your room and chill out for a bit calm down when you when you calm down and come back out right and he would he'd go to his room and so that's what i call his safe place that's his safe place and he likes to go up on the top bunk out the way of everything with his tablet and just chill out and he, he don't like his sister going in the room when he's having that time so I have to make sure she doesn't go in there because he'll scream at her. He'll scream at her. And I have to explain to her, look, he's having his time out. Let him chill out for a bit. When he's ready, he'll let you can go in. Right? So I don't believe in putting a child outside. No. Give him a safe place to go to. Yes. But don't put him outside. Right. And I also don't like the fact that he used to make him bag his toys up if he hadn't picked them up off the floor. And take them down to the trash. No. Okay, if he hasn't done what you've asked him to do, then okay, you take the toys off him. Put them in a cupboard somewhere. And when he's done his room, and he's kept his room tidy for like maybe two three four days something like that give him his toys back but don't make him throw them away you know what i mean he doesn't understand they don't understand a lot of these things that you're trying to get him to do and by not doing it this is going to happen he doesn't understand that right so there's just some things i don't agree with if how they i don't even get me on going on the discipline don't even get me on that But I've also found out today that they are still at Yogi Bear Park, but they've moved nearer the back of the park. Because before they was always parking at the front by the entrance. Now they've moved to the back, where they can't be seen so easily. Hmm.
なんか、そうね。な、I don't know how many of you are on TikTok. I don't really use it. I should. I should make more use of it. But this is chime in, in number two cry. Chime into cry. And she's got a lot to hear about Sebastian and about CP and all of that. And we also got that interview which he did with Crime, Crime, Lies and Lines. Brilliant she is. Think I can talk? She can talk. But we're going to look at... Now, this is something else that came out of the weekend. Right? But I'm going to show you this this one first. Is it this one or that one? I think it's this one. We are now on day 48 of missing Sebastian Rogers with little to no leads in this case. We do know that Chris Proudfoot's stepfather is back at work working at St. Jude's in Memphis, staying at Horn Lake Yogi Bear, him and Katie. This week, we know that they were staying more towards the front. The campground moved him to the back. Thomas popped into the comments last night and said, I am working at St. Jude's. CP was operating the crane for us February 26th, which was that Monday morning that Sebastian was reported missing. I had issues with his performance and his attitude and demeanor all morning so bad that I requested him to be removed. I requested him to be removed from the crane. By 10 or 11, he was replaced and he stormed off the job site. We started that morning at 7 a.m. He goes on to say that Chris is back at work, still working at St. Jude's Memphis, but on the night shift. The day Sebastian went missing, Chris was working on the day shift, and prior to that, he was working on the day shift. Now he's moved. Now we know that he's moved to the night shift. He says that he's seen his truck yesterday when he was leaving work. So this gives us a little insight to how Chris was acting that morning that Sebastian went missing. Right. Now, first of all, what was he still doing at work? Up in the crane. We are now on day 48 of missing. What was he still doing at work on the day Sebastian went missing when apparently he had a phone call? Ah, oh, Katie. Telling him that Sebastian was missing. Right? At about, what, five past six, ten past six, say? And he's on a two, two earpieces, he said. One for his work and one for his phone. And then he does that three-way phone call. That's some else I'll talk about in a minute. And then he tells Katie to go back home. The police will be there. And the police were there very quickly, she said. He said. Right. Now, why was he still at work? Why was he still at work for that guy? What time did you say? Well, fe well firstly, he said they didn't start till 7 a.m. It takes about 20 minutes from Yogi Bear Camp to where his work is. So he phoned the place at, he said, 6.20. But on the dispatch, it said 6.39, the call came through. Why didn't he just phone his works up? 
and say, look, I, can't, I won't be in today. There's a family issue. I've got to get back up to Tennessee. No, he doesn't. He then, after speaking to the police, and puts the phone down, goes into work to start work at 7 a.m. And it was about, what time did they say? Uh, I requested he be removed from the crime by 10 or 11 a.m. AM. He was re replaced and he stormed off the job site. And we start, right? And we start work at 7 a.m. So he was still there at 10 and 11 a.m. in the morning. So what, what was he doing still at work? If his stepson was missing, why didn't he just phone his work something like that? Can't come in today, sorry. Got an emergency at home. But I've got to go get back to Tennessee. He could have been home by one. So, say he did make that phone call at 22, right? So he could have been home by, say, 7, 78, 89, 90. He could have been home by 10.30 in the morning. But he was still at work at 10 a.m. Between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. is when he got replaced. 11 to 12, 12 to 1. Hmm. I think he got home later than one thirty. I think he got home later than one later than one thirty. But that doesn't bother me now. What flipping bothers me is he said <clears throat> he phoned the police at six twenty, but we know for a fact the call comes through at six thirty nine. Yet, he still went to work for 7 o'clock that morning. What the hell? So for three hours, he'd been at work. Who would do that? Knowing your wife's son, your stepson, is missing. Put it this way, if that had been my husband, right, when he walked through those doors, I said, you know what, see that door, walk the feck back out of me, I don't want you here, get out. You should have been here earlier. Why, where the hell have you been till now? So if that guy hadn't reported him, he's just still been working there during the day. So when was he planning on coming home? At the end of the shift. Right? And then, oh God's sake, and then it so tells you, um, He's still working there, but he's now on shift. So he's still working there, but I didn't think they did night shifts, especially in by a hospital. Perhaps they don't, they don't do the cranes. Perhaps they don't do crane work, because that's quite noisy. Perhaps they do ever work during the night. So, if this is true, right, what this guy is saying, then the police will get found this out. Right? Did that... 
and I'm bound off in the head. Hold on, hold on. You phoned us at 20 to 7 in the morning, 6.39, and you still went to work at 7 o'clock. What the hell, man? Why weren't you making your way up here? Why did you still go to work knowing your uh, stepson was missing? That doesn't make sense to me. And I think if the, if this is true, what the, that guy's saying, then it shouldn't make sense to the police either. All right, and don't forget, he Seth phoned him at 20 past 7 because when he got into his car, that's when he said all these missed calls and a message. 911 call phone 911. So he phones him back and Chris says, Don't get upset. But Sebastian is missing. Now, shouldn't I have been saying, Seth, is Sebastian with you? Have you seen Sebastian? Because he's gone missing. No, don't get upset, but Sebastian is missing. I think if that had been me on the other end of that phone, if I'd have been Seb, I'd been wanting to put my fist down my down the phone. Because that just seems odd thing to say as well. There's no concern in his voice from what you can make out. Don't get upset, but Sebastian is missing. No, Seb. Have you seen Sebastian? Have you heard of Sebastian? Have you had any text? Uh, has he phoned you? He's missing. You know what I mean? Where was all that? There's none of that. And that is quite... So that, if this is true, what they're saying, then that should have sent red, red flags up with the law enforcement. All right? And then you got that one. Now, this one. All right. This is a call. That came into Dolly Vision. But it, it just like callings. And this came in. Now listen to this very carefully. I've got my headphones on now, so if you want and you haven't, put earpieces in or headphones on. Because you might hear it a bit better. But um So we're going to play this. And I'll play it again. It's, it's a minute 14. So listen very carefully. Dolly. Ann has the kid. Who has the kid? Has the kid is what I think. Dolly. Ann has the kid. Okay, you guys, when the caller says the aunt has the kids, do you guys think that CP's voice? Dolly Vision. Hello? Now, this, I heard this before she even said anything about CP. Right? I heard it the other, yesterday or Saturday. Uh, was it Friday night or Saturday? Possibly Saturday. And it wasn't hung here. I heard it somewhere. And what they've done, they've slowed it right down so you could hear it. And you can hear him say, the aunt, the aunt has the kids. Right? We're listening again. Dolly. The aunt has the kids. Who has the kid? Has the 
kid is what I think. Dolly. Like, the aunt has the kid. What? No. Someone said, oh, it sounds like Seth. Right? Maybe Seth, but he has been looking for his son. Didn't she? Oh, I'm wrong. But could be. Sounds nothing like Seth. You know what I mean? But then again, I'll go back. What are they gain for hiding him? What are they gaining from that? Because they can't hide him for the rest of his life. Well, I suppose they could. It has been known, hasn't it? But those people have been found eventually. Or managed to escape. You know what I mean? So, I don't see what, what they gain from hiding him. Especially him. Right? I just don't know. Could be CP. Let's listen to that again. Dolly, the aunt has the kid. Who has the kid is what I think. Dolly, the aunt has the kid. Okay, you guys. The aunt has the kid. I think that could be a wonder. I think that's just someone phoning again to wind Dolly up. Right? Because I can't see CP doing it, saying it. Even though it does sound a bit like him, I don't think it is him. So, I think it's just uh, a, a red herring. If you all know what that is. It's just to throw something in the water. It like, throws it in the water. So, you get distracted from what you're really looking at. You then start looking at, okay, someone's phoned up saying, the, the aunt has the kids. Okay, let's look into that. And it took them away from whatever they were looking at. So perhaps the police were getting close on something. So someone's thrown that in to throw them off that, that path to look somewhere else. I think it's a red herring. And I'm not going to put too much into that. It's like these uh, um, polygraphs, right? Now, apparently, I heard CP didn't do his polygraph with law enforcement. And one of the reasons I heard was because he couldn't get time off work, right? But isn't he working nights? So during the day, he's not working. Yeah, okay, you'll be sleeping. Right? But there's weekends. I'm sure they could do it on a weekend. So, and then everyone's going on about Seth falling asleep. Well, I'm sorry, but... That poor guy, for six weeks now, coming on to seven. 
I think this is the seventh week now. 49, 15, 7, 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49. Seven weeks now. 49 days is seven weeks. Right. He has done nothing but be boots on the ground with him, himself, and two other colleagues for weeks. And then everyone started coming out to help him. And then we had that fiasco with uh, UCA. That was a fiasco. And apparently he said something bad about EcuSearch. Well, I'm sorry, but yes, they are really good at what they do. But this is a father who's on the edge here. He's on medication. He's going against his doctors and still going out searching. Still going out putting leaflets, uh, flyers out. Right? He's on medication. He took a polygraph. Now, that polygraph, the guy who's done that polygraph, I'm sure one of the questions they ask you is, are you on any medication? He would have said yes. As soon as he said yes, that po polygraph, polygraph, or whatever, that guy should have stopped it there and then. Because being on medication is not going to help. In a polygraph, he should have stopped it there and then and rearranged it for maybe a couple of weeks when he's off his medication and it's all out of his system, right? And then doing it because everyone's having a go at him for falling asleep. He said himself, There's been times where, and this was before he was on medication, there's been times where he's had to pull over. Right? Just pull over and sleep and go to sleep in the car. Because it's on the go all the time. So, I'm not going to bash him. At least he took a polygraph. CP hasn't. All right, so let's close that down in a minute. Uh, is it on my Facebook? I think if I see it, actually, I'm on. Let me go through YouTube. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Pause it. Pause it. Oh, pause it. Right, I'm going to go back. Uh, I think this is where it's done. Uh, and this is by Crime, Lies and Lines. No, Crime, Lines and Lies. Very good. Very good, she's. I actually got her on my Facebook page. I like listening to her. So we're going to listen to this, right? And then after that, we'll just have a discussion. Got out of physical therapy. 
on the traffic. Um, there's a lot that doesn't make sense with what's going on. Uh, there's a lot that doesn't make sense. You know, people. I listen to a lot of the podcasts, and you know, I'm taking it with a grain of salt. By the way, if you sent me your number to a Facebook, it is not me. I don't have social media. The only thing I have is YouTube. Oh, well, crud. Okay. So if you see a profile out there that says uh, it's me, it's not me. Well, damn. Okay. <laughs> For then? So, uh, well, whoever wants to be me, they, they don't realize what, what that tells me. There's people that every everybody has an opinion, but I don't have social media, so I don't really have to listen to their opinion. No, you don't. You're doing the work. He's your son. I just want to find him. That's, that's all I want to do. At what point <coughs> did you start getting the um, suspicion? That maybe you're not being told the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. From pretty much day one, while listening to her story, because she changed it multiple times. Okay. I mean, for the first three days until Chris decided that he wasn't going on it, he didn't like my sister setting up a GoFundMe. Yeah, like that, you know, and it's like, well, you may not like it, but she asked and I told her she could, and it wasn't for finding Sebastian or anything like that. It's my sister knew that I would go back to work because my, my son's missing. I got a phone in. You know, so the fact is, is that he didn't like it and I had to tell Steve. I'd like to think that neither one of them had anything to do with my son's disappearance. But they could always come help, help pass out flyers, help search. I've never told them that they can't. They have just chose not to. That, you know, they can't get off their dead asses to go search, but they go sit at the damn Cracker Barrel. <laughs> and they say it's because, you know, the public's so mean to them. Well, I mean, aren't there people at the Cracker Barrel? Yeah. You know, it's allegedly somebody's leaking my address and my phone numbers out to people. I still don't have anybody showing up at my house until yesterday. I had somebody actually walking the street taking pictures of where I live. I stood on my front porch smoking a cigarette and just stared at him. I mean, mm -hmm. welcome to the Constitution. You have the right to sit there and take pictures of my house from public property. You know, it doesn't bother me at all. That's what this guy would do. Right? Because there's a saying up here. Like, when my son got married, he looked so, so, oh, brought me to tears. And I went to him, I said, are you being true to the kilt? Because if you're being true to the kilt, you don't wear anything underneath. All right? And he just laughed at me. If that was a Scottish guy standing on his put on a, and he turned around, 
You said you're their backside. Take a photo of that, mate. I don't hide anywhere. You'll find me. My truck's pretty, pretty noticeable. Um, I, I sent you a message in the chat with my email and phone number, by the way. Can you see that? See where it says one where I've got a message. Now I got two. <laughs> now you got two. Look at that. You're popular. Um, More popular than I really ever wanted to be. Yeah, know? not yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, is have you been talking? I'm sure regularly with law enforcement. Nope. They're. They're not going to give me any information. Uh, I got tired of giving them, and it was like I was giving them leads, but I believe that they're talking to Katie and Chris more than they're talking to me. It seems to me because they have all the answers they need from you. There's a lot of questions. He's a father. Right? Stark has been put out of Sebastian's life. He's put out by Child Protective Services, CPS, because they didn't inform me on what was going on. And he's been cut out by the police. Because who's who's the one getting to drive around by the police? Not said. Oh no. It's He's the one who's telling people I put all the information you could ever want. I was I, I was giving a, a drive through on the day by the police and took uh retention pond and everything. Now I'm wondering <coughs> did they do that because uh, they're very friendly with him or B to get his reaction, to watch his reaction come up. You know what I mean? Or see, three, to get him out of the house. Maybe whatever detectives were in the house who wanted to talk to <coughs> who wanted to talk to Katie without him being there. Possibly. Well, there's three possibilities there. One is in with the police. Two, um, they wanted to see his reaction when they took him to this place. This place. And they just wanted him out of the house while the detectives spoke to Katie. about when you saw the video of Sebastian at the restaurant, what was he wearing? Yeah, I got in trouble. I wasn't supposed to tell anybody that. One of my middle names. Okay. <laughs> Do you know? Do you know if they have searched the RV and their cars? I have no idea. I know they haven't searched mine. I've literally told them they can search mine. You know. Now, what is all of this panic talk about polygraphs? You're in law enforcement. You know polygraphs. They're they're not admissible in court. Nope. They can be fooled. I understand you took one recently. Yeah, they're still grading mine. <laughs> 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 
why all the different stories from Chris Proudfoot? You I mean, you know him better than we do. Why one day has he taken one? The next day, TBI said he didn't need to take one. Then he says um, he took one and passed. Then he said Nancy Grace lied to him. Question that that would be, I mean, just so many stories that you can't believe anything that the gentleman says. You know, exactly. Lies and so many different stories. You can't believe a word CP says. You can't. And. He thinks it's like it's a game to him. This is like a big game. I remember in that very first interview that he did with the news people. He said something like, don't take the word for word, but he said something like, he wasn't, ex he didn't expect it to, um, I'm trying to think of a word I can use, um, Explode, right? Wasn't expecting all of YouTubers to, or oh, Amber Earth, fifteen-year-old autistic, just walked out the house, no signs of it, no scent, no trace, no shoes, no phone, no money, no coat. How yeah, we're gonna jump on this case because it's junk from day one. Junk. So, and he was probably expecting it just to be put down as a little run away. He's run away, right? He'll come home in a few days and they could just leave him and leave it. You know what I mean? Do a little search, maybe, and leave it at that. But boy, was he wrong. Took a polygraph at getting Katie. I took one because Miss Grace asked me to. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's taking one or not. He took Nancy Grace asked him to. <laughs> because law enforcement have already accounted for him. They know from PM Sunday evening through till seven AM the next day he was at work. They've got the colleague, they've got the videos. You know what I mean? When when you were in um where he works, where is it, detention centre or wherever, where they take the before they go to court, sort of thing. Yeah? You don't you just held in prison. <laughs> um but you are on camera every corridor you you know what I mean? You're on camera. They've got to move. So they didn't need to take, having take a polygraph. I don't understand what it's to be. I'd rather have still been that private person that I was before I'd rather have never had to be on a podcast, never had to be asked an interview. And, you know, my son lived with me going to work, coming home. My son there. Oh, all this that's going on is just a lot of stress in my life that nobody really ever needs. But as I was told, uh, better suck it up, buttercup. 
So I did. I'm never doing one for interviews. So I enjoyed spending time with my son. And now oh, I don't know if I'll ever get to spend time with him again. Do you hear that? Spending time with his son, but now he doesn't know if he'll spend time with him again. Actually, KP, CP, pull your heads out your backside and tell them what happened. Because no way did that lad just walk. Right? I don't care how dark it was. Right? There's no way he walked out of that house. He took a torch, a little keychain torch. Not very bright, but he gave some light up. And he'd been caught on some doorbell or some home video. Not me. No, tell the truth now. This is getting beyond a joke. How are you feeling physically? I know you said you had to go to physical therapy. Is that for your shoulder or just all the above? Mm. Actually, it was for my neck. They said that my shoulder pain was being caused by my neck. So. Christine Alaska wants to know how, how we can help. The best way to help is, you know, besides keeping your head up and your eyes open, is passing out flyers. That's where tips and stuff come in because people might be seeing my son. Let's light the chat up for Sebastian, please. Sebastian's army. I see the godfather of the case has made it in. That is our friend Trevor. I'm sure you know Trevor, Seth. Trevor Lee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, any any uh, intuition and inkling or anything where Sebastian could be? I have my ideas. I just don't have the resources I need to track it. So, so he's got some ideas. He hasn't got the resources to track them. Track it. Does he think it's something aligned? He's oh. got we've got them looking at other things as well. Like I know you said you've got them looking at the institutions and things like that. In case they're picking me some like some uh, institution for children with autism. Pretty much just. Winging it. Are you getting any advice from the people you work for? She asked some good questions. I think his sound cut out a little bit. Okay, there you are. I think you're gonna have to refresh your mic. Are 
Are you there? Can you hear me? Okay, now we're back. Um, do you have any thoughts on Chris Proudfoot's family? Good, bad, or indifferent? His sister has made some kind of really strange statements, you know, and his. Yeah, apparently, I don't know how true this is. Uh, CP's sister works for the Lord. Mom and stepfather, their goofy asses took off to Alaska. I love how she calls them the goofy asses. She right really after Sebastian went missing. Yep. I know they did. I know, I know you know, for for the person that for for Maddie to be sitting there and making the comments that I heard that she made on Facebook about that's my grandson. Nick, Mark is working. I, I don't know. I'll just check. But it's the the mic of my. That's all on. Right. Why is it the mic on my laptop? It keeps cutting in and out, I was told. Well, this week, sometime this week, I'm ordering a new one, which is external to the laptop. And I'll be able to speak into that rather than have to sit so close to my laptop for my mic to pick me up. Nick, what if Kate? Oh yeah, I'll put that one up. What if Kate and Seth hatched a plan with a third person? Possible, but to do what to Heidi? Just to hide Sebastian, or to get rid of a? I don't want to say this, but I don't have to say to get rid of a body. Because I can't see the reasoning behind hiding Sebastian. Because eventually, the next tomorrow, the day after, two weeks down the road, two years down the road, right? He could escape. Yeah, or be seen by someone. So I think, oh, well, it's all called off now. The police aren't looking, the searches aren't going on, the flyers aren't being put out no more, right? If they, if they think like that and they start letting Sebastian have a bit of freedom, someone might recognise him. Think, oh, no, isn't that the lad? was all over the TV, all over YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. You know what I mean? So it, they would get found out. Either way, even if he escaped, he would be able to tell them where he's been, who had him, everything. So I can't see any, I can't see what they have to gain from hiding him. Right, I'm going to pull myself closer so you can hear me a bit better as well. Um, but then my someone said on the day he went missing, right, well, in the morning, just as the police were being called, about 6.30, something like that between, somewhere around about that time, they saw... CP's mother's car parked up 
along this one route. Right? Don't know where. They just seen a car parked up. Now, could they have uh, handed him over to her? Handed him over? Possible. Uh, was he alive when they handed him over? Don't know. Was he unalived and they've handed him over so they can get rid of the body? Possible. However, by the time Seth got there at what, 8 a.m., 8, 8, 10, Kathy was already at the house with Katie. So, and like I said earlier, Seth got in trouble for asking TBI about the clothes he was wearing on the Sunday. If they had them or if Katie had them. And he got in trouble for asking about that question. Now, to me, that's just a... Well, I've got the clothes he was wearing. Because if they haven't, then has Katie got them? If Katie hasn't got them, that means, in my opinion, he never came home that night. So, there's so many possibilities that could have happened. Well, there's only two possibilities. Two. One is unalive to the hiding him. Hiding him, I did think about that. But then I thought, well, what, like I've just said, what would they gain from that? So, if he did come home that night, if you noticed in that interview Katie done, she said, when he's hurt, when he's had a very, like, when he's been very active during the day, he gets highly stimulated. Yeah? And if he's anything like my grandson, then he can be very loud, very rambunctious, uh, very argumentative, and all this, all that, you know what I mean? So, if he did come home that Sunday night with his mum, was was there an argument between her and Sebastian? Because when she said she heard a thud, no. She was in that room when, when it, whatever it happened, if he found, you'd say, if you were in a room with someone and that person fell, and then you tried to explain to someone later, it was like a thud. He hit the thud, and it's like a thud sound. She was in that room, and I think his fell, hit his head, and He's got that water on the brain, on the one side, which has been said, if he gets hit on that side part of the head hard, it can kill him. So I think something happened. If he did come home Sunday night, something happened in that house. But the police have got no forensics, no evidence of foul play because they didn't they took her word for it they took her word that he walked out of that house they didn't think after there was no scent of the dogs or anything like that hold on this isn't adding up 
Why? Because you'd have a scent of him coming back and forth from the bus stop. You'd have a scent of him going back and forth with the just bins, with the trash. You'd probably have a scent for him getting the post. Like one neighbour said, she's seeing her pull up in the car one day. Sebastian jumped out. She drove the car up playing into the garage. He jumped out, got the post out, the, the post box. Went skipping around to the front door, but then suddenly turned round and come back to the back door. I don't think he knew the key, the code to that front door. I think he lost. Oops! I can't get in that way. I'll go through the garage, and that's when he turned round and went back through the garage. Now they get, they would be all that scent around the house but they said no dog they had one dog not three dogs like cp says there's one dog that hit on his scent that took him to this retention pond now for all we know his mom could have put him outside on the saturday because he's probably having a bit of a meltdown put him outside to calm down he's probably thought I'm going for a walk. Neighbour, one of the residents from that area, where they're building all these new houses, said they had seen Sebastian walking them road, those streets before, just not on the Monday. Right? So they know Sebastian had, has been up that way before. So, that scent the dog picked up on could have been from Saturday, could have been from the Friday, could have been from the Thursday. Could have been any time before Sunday. Any time before Monday. But for one dog and one dog only, not three. If you listen to that call, it was one dog. Then Chris says, it's Chris who goes on about those two other dogs came in and, he, and went to the same place. Then this dog trainer come in with his dogs and one of his dogs hit on the sink and took him to the same place. It doesn't work. No. No. That sink could have been from any day. But there's no scent of him around the house at all. Not right outside by the garage outside, not down by the post box, nowhere. Apart from this one dog picked up a scent that led him to the retention pond. And it led him from the front door, round the side of the house, up to up, past the garage, up towards the fencing, along the fencing, and then cut through. All right? So, I don't believe a word CP says, because it's full of BS. I just worry that Seth is not listening to doctors and not getting the rest he should be getting. Done, and for her to turn around and disappear to Alaska. With her actions speak louder than words. I've always been a person that believe actions speak louder than words. You got that right. So. Because you, I mean, you, you have a child in your family that you can't find. You don't go to Alaska. He's not in Alaska. Mm. 
Just like Katie going down to Mississippi with Chris. And she's like, well, because he could be anywhere. Trevor's in the chat. I put the link up, Trevor, if you want to come up. Trevor said, sex should speak volumes. He wants his son found. Yeah. Do you know? Oh, if, I mean, if you can tell us, you can tell us. If you can't, we're going to understand. If law enforcement's looking into any connections to them running to Mississippi or a goofy family running up to Alaska. Sorry, I did warn you I could get kicked off because my internet is drying up. We've got a bit of a strong, strong wind around us here up in Dundee. So, sorry about that. I'll just put it back up on the screen for you all again. Right, just take it back a minute or so. Yeah. He made on Facebook about that's my grandson and for her to turn around and disappear to Alaska with her husband Terry. That that kind of actions speak louder than words. Can speak louder than words. You got that right. So. <laughs> because you, I mean, you, you have a child in your family that you can't find. You don't go to Alaska. He's not in Alaska. Just like Haiti going down to Mississippi with Chris. And she's like, well, because he could be anywhere. Trevor's in the chat. I put the link up. Trevor, if you want to come up. Trevor said, Seth's actions speak volumes. He wants his son found. Yeah, it does. That's what yeah. this is so. And if law enforcement's looking into any connections to them running to Mississippi or Chris's uh, goofy family running up <laughs> to Alaska. I don't. I don't know. They got tell me nothing. I don't even know who's leading the investigation anymore. I don't know who's doing the investigations. I've looked on Sumner County website to see if I could, if my son was on there. 
And he's not even on there under their missing persons. So, I don't know a lot of stuff anymore. Well, hang on, we should be on some from the county one. Trevor said they haven't even listed him on their open cases. How do you feel about that? Oh, Sumner County or TBI? Kick me off again. I'm getting so annoyed now. It's the weather. We have any heavy rain or strong winds that our internet is fat. Fifteen mentally. He has all the he's that he's has autistic and he's been diagnosed with autism and then his chromosomal deletion all of that you know mentally he's not 15 you know maybe 10 and it took three days to get him as an amber alert their policies and procedures are not designed for a child that is on the spectrum and they should immediately have put him on the amber alert and it should have definitely they should have definitely have investigated differently yeah. when it comes to the investigation in part yeah the search and but they sh they should have turned around and dusted for fingerprints looked for anything thing that might have been out of the normal you know and they didn't do that they they failed my son they still have they have filed it i agree because like you said the first 48 hours is the most important so why take her word why on earth did they not just conduct a proper investigation right off the bat well, good question maybe uh Maybe their deputy chief can answer that question. But, you know. What do you, did you, did you see what came out last night on the local? Well, I'm sorry, but I think someone needs to look into the Tennessee investigation people, the police there and the TBR. Because they are failing the children. As I said, TBR seems to struggle when it's a complex case. They did the same with Summer Moon, Utah, Wells. It's coming up to three years, nearly. March, April. Yeah, my two more months, I think it is. And it's three years. Have they done anything for the last two years? No, they haven't. Even though 
when those lads we took off them, there were signs of neglect, everything. Right? Why hadn't I arrested them or charged them with neglect? No, they haven't charged no one. They haven't cleared no one. And the same in this case, I don't know how to investigate a, a case. They believe the parents over a, anything. You know, I was always told by, I, I heard a, a detective in America talking once. And he said, when you go to any case, yeah, yeah, Robbie, but he said, this detective, um, I think he's retired. It's that when he goes to when he went to any case, he had like a checklist, and he always looked at the case as a uh, if if say there's a missing child, he'd look at it. Has there anything happened in the house? Right. So they'd have all the forensics took inside the house. Right. If that all came back clear, then they go, or could it be a kidnapping? Right? Now there's uh, an organisation called CAD. I can't remember what it's called now, or where are you pronouncing? And now the team that comes in and for any signs of kidnapping. Right? If they say no signs of kidnapping, then you go, okay, perhaps this child did just walk out the house. Right? Thank you for the green heart, Robbie. But perhaps this child did walk out the house. But they haven't done none of that. They've just took the mother's work boy, he walked out of the house between 5 o'clock at night and 6 a.m. How do we know he didn't walk out of the house at 11 p.m. at night or 10.30 p.m.? Because she never checked on him. Never checked on him before she went to bed. Even though she heard that big thud. Right, she never checked on him. So he could have gone, if he, if he had this walked out, he could have gone out, and I'm sorry, but he hasn't gone out the window because there's no sign of that. If you don't know the code for the front door, which I don't think he does, because he only ever went in and out the back door, like the garage way with his, with his mum. The neighbour said, as I've just said, I get out the car to pick up the post. He's went skipping along to the front door, then realised, oh no, and then went back round to the garage doors and went in the garage door. He doesn't know the code to the front door. So if that door's locked, how's he getting out? Right? If he'd gone out the back way, the dogs would have heard. The door squeaks. She would have heard it. But would she? Makes me wonder. Some parents are heavy sleepers. Just saying, I'm not. My grandson, as soon as he takes one foot out of his bed, it's like, oh, here he comes. I hear him move about in his bed. When he's going to come into me. So I know before he's even got out of bed, he's coming into mine. I'm pulling the duvet for it back. So your local news with Nick Barris, where he said he spoke with law enforcement and said that it's an investigation, but the DA won't do anything because they have no physical evidence. How can that even be possible? Well, if they have no 
physical evidence because they didn't do forensics. Exactly. I mean, we're talking about they didn't tape off anything. They didn't come in. They didn't loom all the house. They didn't dust his room for fingerprints that wouldn't have belong there. They they didn't do. They didn't do a fucking shit. Oh. Mm-hmm. First time I've heard him spare. Good one, Steph. Good one. When it came to the investigation. They asked questions. Well, asking questions is fine if you're looking for a missing person, but you don't know if, you know... That press conference was just wow. Uh, well, I, I'm a lot disgusted, and I'm sure it was kind of quite the punch in the gut to you. Oh yeah, because they said they don't have anything, and then they want to sit there and tell me that you know get mad because I ask questions, and then tell me that they only want legitimate leads when I'm when I'm sending them everything, and I'm on legitimate leads. You guys don't have any leads. That's what you're telling me. It's what you're telling everybody else. Oh God, I heard God. that telephone call with Chris on it. Oh God. Didn't I say just a Didn't I say, sorry about that, got kicked out again. Didn't I say, it doesn't matter how big, how big or how small the information is, we will check every bit of information that comes in. Did they not? Yes, they did. And I'm moaning at him for passing on information that he's finding, he's finding. That doesn't make sense to me. Why? So, really, they don't have any information. They just, just want legitimate information. You know, oh, I rode around with them. You know, they showed me this, they showed me that. Well, isn't that nice that you're not even a biological parent, and yet they turned around and showed you everything. You go for it, Seth, because it is wrong. Him being Seth being out of the loop is not right. He knows what he can say and what he can't say. He knows that. So if they tell him anything, he's not going to come on YouTube and go, well, the law enforcement have told me this, and law enforcement have told me that. He's not going to say that. Huh. Kind of makes me wonder how much somebody got paid. Same here, because he's the last one that should be riding around with them. It should be you. You know, most of the time when you're doing a search and rescue for a child that's autistic, you'll have at least one of the parents, the biological parents, they could possibly scare the child and they yeah. need to hear a voice that is 
familiar to them. Yeah. And yet, Katie did. It was very upsetting um, to all of us that instead of, of calling 911, she mm -hmm. called Chris say, and, and some change. Minute. What that uh, guy says, he works there. If you have to believe that, then he wasn't even at work when they phoned the police. Right? Oh, God. He wasn't even at work. His work didn't start till seven. So to get to work for seven, the latest he's got to leave is 22. 20 to 7. So, if anything, if he was on the phone at 6.39, he was in the car on the way to work talking to the police. Because he was at work till when? Between 10 and 11 a.m.? When he got replaced because one of the workers didn't like said his whole attitude, something, was, something wasn't right, you know what I mean? Probably because he'd been up all night, getting rid of something. It's count when you're looking for anything, but most importantly, a child. And she doesn't need leave the house why was she not knocking on doors why didn't she call you you would have been out there in a heartbeat to find it they did call my phone they said well chris called my phone and sent me a text message both of them they was in county and asked to speak to my captain mm -hmm. my captain i mean i said that i said when i find out that didn't get the phone call, well, a text message or whatever. Till I said, Oh, they're urgent. Father, you need to know if your son is with the father. Why did they not phone his commander up or his chief up? Not me. If Seth was with, if he'd seen or heard of uh, Sebastian, he said, don't get upset. And they would have literally pulled me out of work immediately and I'd have been there. Yeah. Instead of me being there, you know. I had so. After I got off work. Captain, why did you phone him up at work? Doesn't make sense. None of this makes sense. My son's not a runner anyways, and I tried to tell him that. Yeah. But they don't want to listen to me. The state of Tennessee has, is... I have no faith in Sumner County. In the fact that they want to, <laughs> I can't work for a, a department or a, an office that... I'm doing my best with the sign title. My son's electronics. I'm getting a new mic you know, this week. Why? Why do you still have his electronics? Give them back. You know, why is it that I have researched and found more information that I'm pretty sure may that they haven't? They haven't looked at it at all. You know, they don't have anything. From my understanding, besides having family that works there, you know. Has the, has the FBI been any help? I've spoken with, with them, but it takes 60 <laughs> days from the start of the case before you, you can request the FBI to come in and let them that is doing it. I Now, if someone pulled up some information on the FBI the other day, that's something I did see. 
in between sorting out my grandchildren. The FBI, you can call it, the FBI will step in any time. So I think there isn't a waiting period. But he's been told there's a waiting period of 60 days. That does not make sense. Law enforcement and T. Oh, hiccups now. Law enforcement and T. I've got nothing. Because uh, he's got law enforcement in his hands, in his pocket. Or his dad, his stepdad has, anyway, or his mother has. We know for a fact that his sister works for law enforcement. <coughs> oh wow! I'm glad to hear that uh, phone call they made to the sheriff's office. Is if those are three way, right? Why did Chris tell? This is, but. She put her phone on mute, right? That's when you hear her. Okay, thanks, Hazel. And, uh, but then, um, what was it? Where am I? I'm trying to talk to God. And then, she's a three way call, so she could see what was being said, apparently. Right? So why did Nick, er, uh, Nick, see, I'll get the name out in a minute, Chris, tell Katie to go back to the house, the police are going to be there. If she was on that three-way call, she would have heard the police say, we'll come in, right, we'll get, we dispatch someone straight away. You know what I mean? Then we'll give her some, that. Like, so I'd like to know who those talked to in dispatch. Was it his sister? Because apparently there's no recording. As well. Apparently that's what I've heard. I don't know who that is. I don't know if they get a recording when you phone directly to the sheriff's office. I know if you phone 911, it's recorded. But I don't know how it works there when you phone the sheriffs, if it's recorded or not. Personally believe that after 30 days, Sumner County not doing what they should have done at all, ever. They should have released it to TBI and asked them to come in and given TBI 30 days to fuck everything up. And then ask the FBI to come in and actually do their job. Yeah. I mean, the FBI card unit at the least. Because they have ways of knowing if he was abducted or not. That seems to be what Katie is she's leaning not. towards. Yeah, she's leaning towards that now. You know, 30 days later, maybe somebody took him. Yeah. Well, <laughs> They've got plenty of time to clean their house, haven't they? Oh, yes. Plenty of time to destroy evidence that was there. Four, they've had, had four to time long days. To actually clean up evidence before, you know, we found out he was missing. Because we don't even know when he went missing. No. We don't. Mm -mm. We don't. Do we even know where Chris Proudfoot truly was? Do we even know if Katie was at home? We don't. We don't really know anything. We know approximately what time that they arrived back to the house. But, you know, that would be looking at the video cameras. Chris and Katie have had plenty of access to those from our neighbors. It took them five weeks to show me proof of life after I had spoken to him on Thursday. That's bad. Five weeks.
Do you know if EquiSearch has plans to come back anytime soon? I have no idea. I not really particularly fond of David Radar's. I missed it. What did he say? I missed it. You what, ma'am? I said I missed it. What did he say? Because he's no Tim Miller. I'll say that for sure. Uh, he didn't turn around and stated that he thinks it's ridiculous that somebody would threaten somebody who's looking for a 15-year-old kid. My volunteers to hand out flyers have been followed. I've passed on license and the press conference, they were like, oh, nobody's being threatened or, you know, followed yeah. or anything like that. And then, yeah, David Radar was the open. Oh, you were there with TVI agents, buddy. I've got civilians out here handing out flyers. Yeah. I don't see you. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I appreciate the fact that they have drones and they can sit there and attempt to find my son. But why, what happened with this? They searched for two days last week. What's that? And they only did that. They knew the following week uh, they had Two dive teams coming down and some other searches coming in. Right? And the police thought, right, we best sort this out, get our books up the chairs and get out there, show our presence. You know what I mean? Because then the following week, and they had two dive teams go down. So the police don't. Those two days, and Equisearch was told, said, they go by what the police asked them to do. And, um, what was it? They said the police only wanted their drones. They didn't want any foot searching. They got their own searches for that. They just needed their drones. So, I mean, two. You search for two days after, after what? After over information from people that doesn't make sense. Rockland Park, for example. You know, I get some. Some cadaver dogs, and then bam! Automatically, they they find a dead body. But TBI was there the day before searching. Well, did you not have any type of dog to go with you? No sniffers, no live dogs, no cadaver dogs. What kind of searching did you do? Doesn't make sense. Good question. Two whole days. What to get donations and everything? That's crazy. Well, I don't think they did any donations. I mean, it was Sumner County, TBI, and uh, the FBI. Church. Possible for <laughs> you? I don't know. Well, according to what I'm on last night, put the
I'm getting really annoyed here with the uh, stream yard. But this is nearly finished now, so hopefully we can get through the rest of it without me being kicked off. I guess they do. I guess they do. Back. Well, have you thought about possibly getting an attorney to help you like navigate with law enforcement and get things in the works so that way when Sebastian comes comes home, he comes straight to you. Thought about it. More along the lines of private investigators and things like that. I mean, I've already spoken with CPS and I don't want him going back to their residence at all. Good. He doesn't deserve to be treated like that. Nobody does. You have found a lot of stuff out about his treatment podcasts. I can't even imagine how that felt. Good wrenching. Listening to them make fun of the way he dances and the way he looks. I mean, seeing the, ref the reflection of the sneers and their facial expressions when they even talk about him. The fact that they can't. Even I know it's a lot to take on, but, and I'm no attorney, so you would have to get this advice from an attorney. Um, if you filed for, you know, full custody of him right now, I don't know how that would go down during the situation, then law enforcement would have to deal with you and not them. I'd have to find an attorney. I haven't actually been looking for one, so I guess I can turn around and look for an attorney. Something else to do, too. In this chat, for sure. I appreciate it. the hammer down and say you have until noon which it's 11 49 here i'm central time i'm in oklahoma so you have until noon i'll just throw out a number to produce sebastian um, uh well i mean if it's law enforcement saying you know you're going to go to jail unless you produce your son i don't know if they can do that i mean i'm just throwing things out there but i mean i think an attorney would help you immensely getting custody of Sebastian would help you immensely and you know you get on for more than you know timelines and lines facebook so i was gonna make a post yeah if he got an attorney an attorney right 
and he got custody of Sebastian now, right? The law enforcement would have to talk to him about the case because he would be the sole caregiver. So I think it finishes there anyway because it's it's left. So we'll finish it there ourselves. But if that was the case, it would have to involve me. So it might be a good idea to get that put in place. Because they're not going to get a custody of him. Plus, that the child went missing under their care. And it's on video. There's loads of people on YouTube who have got it on video of him saying he used the belt on him. Not one, not one time, twice. Because what the time he told Nancy Grace. He said it's because he lied, right? Now that still isn't good enough reason to use a belt on an autistic child, right? The second time, which he told YouTube about, not Nancy Grace told us about, was because he hadn't got a belt. And that's when he went to school after Seth Erkis used the bell phone, he went to school and told the teacher. The teacher is mandatory to report it. And that's when Child Protect CPS or whoever came out to the house while I was having dinner. So that's two times to our knowledge. So I think he used that belt on that lag a lot more than twice. A lot more. The crime, the punishment had to fit the crime. That's what he said. Now I don't think lying is a good enough reason to use a belt on a child. But then again, when I think back to when I was younger, <laughs> many, many moons ago, right? My, my one brother, he was always playing truant, truant from school. Now, this is when you had the truant officers come out and they would go around the shops and the shopping centres and things like that, catch you walking around. Right? Well, my brother got caught out by not going to school. And they they got in touch with my mum. So my brother's come home, as usual, from school. And my mum said, all right, I'm school go today. And my brother's coming out with all this balami, right? And at the time, I'm not joking. We, we didn't have washing machine, automatic washing machines then. You had the twin tubs, if anyone knows what a twin tub is, right? She got the hose that she used from the tap to the washing machine, to fill the washing machine up. She got that hose and she walloped my brother with the hose, right? Nowadays, if you do even go back to a child nowadays, you have child CPS on you. Which I think is right. It should be used. It was stopped in schools. You know what the reason was they gave in the UK for stopping using the belt at school? Because children would enjoy it too much. I don't think any child getting the belt across the backside they enjoyed. You know what I mean? I don't think I know one child 
who got the bounce in Georgie. But that was stopped at school. But then, so did a lot of other things get stopped at school. <laughs> I was in classes where the teacher would throw the, you know, the duster to wipe the chalk off the board. We had a teacher that he knew exactly who was talking when he had his back turned to us. And this duster would just go flying across his either left shoulder or his right shoulder. And God, we all ducked. We would all literally duck our heads. We knew it was coming because we could hear that person talking ourselves. So we knew that the just down thing was coming and it was made of wood with some like foam on it. And he hit that child every time. He knew exactly where the child was. And he if you went home and told your mum about it, you got on ever clout round here. Well, you should have been behaving then, shouldn't you? I must admit, if my kids had come home and said, if you just hit me, mum, I'd go right. And I'd have been right up at school. Right? If you've got a problem with my son, tell me. I'll sort the little fecker out. Right? But that's when it all went to pot, I think. When, when they stopped discipline in schools, it all went to pot. Anyway, I don't know what you all think of this case. I know Robbie is all Seth and Sebastian. Thank you for the hearts. All right. Everyone else, I hope, is also Sebastian. Right? Um, but I'd just like to say thank you for being here. I haven't been here now since Thursday was my last live. I said I wouldn't be here Friday and Saturday because I've got my grandkids. So it's like a big catch up. This afternoon when I got home, it's like turn my laptop on and let's catch up with what's been going on. But it's interesting to hear that guy who's supposed to work with him say what he did. <coughs> <coughs> because surely, if, as I said, if the law enforcement had been to his work, the law enforcement would have spoke about it. They'd have heard about that incident, about him being took off the train and him storming out the works, storming off out the works. What the hell was he still doing that work at 10 and 11 in the morning anyway? He should have been at home. He should have been going to work at 7. He could have found his work so at 20 to 7 and said, look, sorry, or half 6. I can't make it. I've got a family situation. I've got to get back to Tennessee. Right? I'll explain more later. No, he goes into work for seven o'clock and stays there till ten, maybe half ten when he gets kicked off the ground. Replaced by someone else. He made it sound like he had to stay there until he got replaced. In the first interview, it, it made it sound like he had to stay there until he got someone to replace him. Because I thought, well, if this happened at 20 past six or half six in the morning, surely they could have got someone up there by 7 a.m. in the morning to replace you. And you could have been going by 7 to 8 to 9, on, by 10.30. But apparently he didn't get replaced till between 10 and 11 in the morning. And that's only because this one guy said he, he, wouldn't, he couldn't work with him because of his attitude and all this lot. And he got replaced. And he didn't like it and stormed off the works grounds. So, 
I just want to know why you're still at work. That's my question for you now. And what's the other questions I have for you? Oh, yeah. Not for him, for her. The word tragedy. And I would say, I would say, what? I would say, Sebastian, uh, Bubba, we love you, we miss you, we want you to come out. I wouldn't say that. I, if someone said, what would you say to your son now? If he can hear this, what would you say? I'd say, Sebastian, if you can hear this and you can get away, run. We love you. We are looking for you. We will find you. And no one is going to stop us. We will find you. And we will bring you home. You know what I mean? But it wasn't. It was like, well, she did say all that. But it's like, it's like sort of like rehearsed. And you could see she's trying to cry. You could see her eyes getting a bit moist. But there wasn't a tear. Wasn't one tear. She needs to go back to acting acting school. And yes, they are still at Yogi Bear Campground. They've, they've just been moved nearer the back end. Away from the front. So. But apparently there's supposed to be some protests going on about the 20th, something like the 20th, 21st. Don't know who that is. I heard there's some protests going on this weekend, just got, and there's a police car there. That police car was there just to make sure to get out of hand. Just to make sure they're okay, really. We don't care about them. We care about Sebastian. We want to know where this lad is. And they know. Something happened and they know how it was. And they know where he is. Or they perhaps they don't know where he is. Perhaps he was handed over. But they know what happened. So, but perhaps they don't know where he is. And as for the polygraph CP, we heard, I heard you didn't take the polygraph because you had to go to work. Well, apparently, since you've gone back to work, you've been working odds. So you could have done it during the day or even during the weekend because you don't work weekends. Anyway. I will be back tomorrow. I might do one earlier on in the day. So I don't know if anyone's going to be here for that. But I'll think about it between now and when I go to bed. They do know, Daisy. Thank you for coming in. They do know. They know what happened to him. But like I said, if they handed him over to someone else, to a third person, they may not know where he is. Um, and look at those four people that have just had arrested now for the, the merge of those two young mothers. There's no body. There's no bodies. They found no bodies. But they've arrested four people. Fine. Same here. There's no body. But there's an, uh, it's circumstantial, I know. But I'm sorry, there's in your, I think there's in your circumstantial to at least charge them. Or even arrest them and take them in for questioning. You know what I mean? But like Robin said, she thinks it, law enforcement, they've got them in their pocket, haven't they? And that's why law enforcement aren't doing what they should be doing. And I think it's disgusting. Law enforcement have not got Sebastian 
Ryan Drake Rogers, 15 year old autistic missing child on their uh, page, their page for the missing children. That is disgusting, especially when they're standing there and telling the community the best thing you can do is keep checking your properties, hang out flyers. Keep his name and keep his picture out there. They can't even put his name and picture on their own missing child website. And I thought to report when they did get a press release. If it was nothing, as Dolly Vision goes, it's a nothing burger. If it was another nothing burger, then, as a report, I'll be going, um, can you tell us why you haven't got Sebastian Rogers on your Facebook, on your page for missing children? That would throw it. You know what I mean? I think this protest that is supposed to be going on about Chris and Kay, I would say, don't waste your breath on them. Don't waste your breath on them. Waste your breath and energy on the law enforcement. Get them out there. Get them publicly shown up for not doing their job. Because they've literally stood there and said they've got nothing. They're waiting for that one big tip to come in and break the case. Yeah, you know, I'm Hazel. It's disgusting. And if this was over here and I found that out over here, I'd rip our place to bits. I wouldn't be doing a live on Sebastian. I'd be doing a live on law enforcement and them not doing their job. There's a case last year of a woman who went missing. By law enforcement fecked up on that big time. Big time. They didn't put no tape up. Right, no uh, face tape. They didn't put none of that up. And where they said she fell into the river, into the river, they still had the general public walking up and past this bench area with their dogs. I think, oh, God, why have you got this taped off? This should all be taped off. There's a crime that has happened here. You're telling us this woman fell in the river here. So why haven't you got it all taped off? They didn't tape it off. The reporters were able to get right up to her, right up to where she went into the water. And then they did this investigation into the police. And guess what? They found that the police have no blame. We knew that was coming. Because it's... Law, it's, it's the police policing the police. So they're not going to say anything bad about the police. And the same here. If they did an investigation into the law enforcement here, it would be law enforcement investigating law enforcement. They're not going to say a bad thing about them. They're going to come back and say they've done everything they possibly can. They've had all the searches out. They've done this. They've done that. But you haven't done it right. You should have taped that house off as a crime scene. Gone in, got fingerprints, got done the illuminate, right? checked for any type of blood, a speck of blood anywhere in that bedroom. Right? Was there any fingerprints on the keypad to the front door that shouldn't have been on there. Like, 
apparently Chris's parents have the code. They got the code for it. Okay. But with the amount of times that Chris and his mum, Chris's parents come over, I think Katie would have used it more than anything. So it would be her fingerprint on the top. So if their fingerprint was on top, the first fingerprint was on top, was one of the parents, then I'd be thinking, why are your fingerprints on this? Right? But they have done nothing like that. Now, apparently, as I was having a barbecue this weekend, got pictures of me, someone took photos of them having a barbecue this weekend with people on the uh, caravan path. So, they're not missing him. They've got the life they want now. Apart from he hasn't got his daughter, and you will never get his daughter. Never. I don't even think he'll get visiting rights. Right. I'll be surprised if he got visiting rights to his daughter after all this has come out. So, I don't know. I'll just hope we do find him one way or the other. And then, as CP says, the truth will come out. Now, I was watching another YouTuber the other day, and they're talking about the money, right? Can they afford to live in that house where they live with his wages and just her wages, right? Like when, when Seth, um, Sebastian goes to live with his dad, his dad would get his disability, maybe. So they'd be losing, if they've got any disability for him, They'd be losing that money. And the dad, Seth, would get it. Right? Well, apparently, this evoked someone. Because someone come through making out there was a neighbour of theirs stating that this isn't a million. It's only this much. And Katie has a... Uh, a pension from the Navy and Chris has this money and this money and Katie has this much money and all this lot and we all sat there thinking sorry Linda I'm doing my best with the mic I've got on my laptop I'm out to buy a new one this week an external one but it might be my internet playing up as well. I'll see if I can turn it up anymore. I can't sit any closer to my laptop. I'll be right on the screen if I do. No. And um, for what neighbour knows all that about you? Did you do any of you? know what your neighbour does, right? How much their house is worth? What money they got? Right? No, this is a new laptop, Linda. But the mic isn't brilliant. So I'm getting an external mic that I'm just plugging to my laptop. But this is only one. Well, got this in February, this laptop. But as I said, if we get bad weather, we have bad internet as well. So that does help. But whose neighbour? Do, do any of you know your neighbours, how much they work, how much they earn, whether they've got a pension and all this lot? You know what I mean? No. You don't. You just know I'm well enough to maybe say hello, hi, as you're walking in and out of the house, maybe. Or when you're cooking, mowing the lawn. But you don't know about 
their living expenses. Yeah, I'm getting one this week. I meant to get one the other couple of weeks ago. Then everything has got in the way. So I'm getting one this week. I'll see my favorite Prime, um, what is he? Amazon Pro, Amazon driver. I tend to know him by name. That's how often I deliver here. Yeah. Uh -huh. But um, no one knows how much anyone earns. But this guy I can't really knew exactly how much their house was worth, how much he earned, Chris earned, how much Katie earned, how much pension she got, everything. So this YouTuber believes it's the CP making out she was a neighbour. So, and then she was on another chat on another site. And someone coming in, oh, can't remember, uh, some at Bull or some at Hall, right? And uh, this YouTuber clicked onto this game to act straight away and she put up a comment. Saying, Do you think that such and such Hall or such and such Bull is actually CP? She said, and once she put that comment out, that person never come back in chat. Never come, came back into chat. So that was CP again. So you never know who's in your chat. And I know for a fact that, like, if I was on a Facebook page, of Seth Rob Rogers, I know for a fact that would be a fake account because he he said he never had any of that from the beginning. He only uses YouTube so he can do like the live chats. You know what I mean? Like with Nancy Grace and other YouTubers. So if I ever seen a uh, a Facebook page out there under the name of Seth Rogers, I will report it as a fake account using someone else's name and maybe someone else's picture. But I will report it straight away. So if anyone sees a Facebook page <coughs> or Twitter or Instagram or TikTok of Seth Rogers, report it. Because he doesn't have any of them. He only uses YouTube. And then he only uses it to watch podcasts. And to come on to live. Like, it did be crime lies and lines. So, uh, I'll be looking out now. I might even see if there's any Facebook pages. I might type his name in and see what comes up. Bye. Uh, but KT, uh, KP and CP blocked both locked their facebook pages down so no one can see what they what they're doing no more the world because every time he posted anything about sebastian he'd literally take it down during a few minutes <coughs> katie was putting stuff up there for sebastian so why lock it down doesn't make sense. I can't understand why they took those magnets off their car for Sebastian. We know your car, it doesn't matter if you have the magnet on it or not. We know we know what your trailer looks like, we know what your cars look like. So taking the magnets off your car isn't going to say, well, if they don't see the magnet on the car, they won't know it's me. Oh, we know it's you, Katie. And you, Chris. Piece of shit. So, yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, that was thinking out loud. So, anyway. It is 10 to 11 here at, on the night. 20 to 51p. 
p.m. So I'm going to say good night. Thank you all for being here and contributing to the chat. Just bear with me for a few more days and I'll get my new mic. And then hopefully, I can't go into you at the internet though, because my internet is a new internet supplier. It's one of the best ones you can get. But if we get any high winds and heavy rains here in Dundee, we get a lot of interference with our internet. So that's what was happening tonight because we've had some very strong winds the past weekend. Some heavy rain. The rain has been coming down in heavy bursts. Not long periods, just heavy bursts of rain. Now that's what I call April showers. They say never go out until May without the coat. Because all the way from April, you're going to get the showers. May, you might just get a few. But you get a lot more nicer weather come May. So once you hit May, you can start going out and have our big coats on. Good night, Hazel. And thank you, everyone, for being up. I really do appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind, please hit that like, if you haven't already. I would really appreciate this. Really, really appreciate it. So thank you, everyone. And until tomorrow, tomorrow, I'm not sure whether I'll be doing one in the afternoon, but I'll be back again at 8 o'clock tomorrow. Whatever time that is your end, I do not know. Take five or six hours off mine. So it's between 2 and 3 p.m. in the afternoon, wherever you are. All right. So I see you all tomorrow. Good night and thank you again.